They call it the closest Earth-like planet, and at first glance, you almost believe it. You stand at the twilight edge where eternal sunset meets eternal night. For as long as you can see under a soft red sun, there are mountains both ahead and behind you. Ones are glowing hot, others are dark and cold. It feels peaceful, like maybe you could camp here and even go for a hike. Then the sky explodes. The gentle sun you'd admired seconds ago just belched out a storm of radiation strong enough to fry your DNA like bacon. Proxima b is just 4.2 light years from Earth and also a prime example of why you should read the fine print before booking a one-way ticket. Turns out the star it orbits, Proxima Centauri, likes to throw temper tantrums in the form of massive flares, regularly blasting the surface with enough radiation to sterilize it over and over again. So, if you're still tempted to visit, you'd better pack sunscreen with SPF 1 million and at least 10 lead umbrellas. Trust me, you'll need every single one. And if this is what the closest seemingly Earth-like world does to you, just wait till you see what the others have in store. Today, we're touring the galaxy's most extreme exoplanets while trying to stay alive and sane. So now you know better than getting too close to a red dwarf, but the opposite extreme is, well, even more extreme. This is Ogle 2005-something-something-b, a super-Earth practically halfway across the galaxy, 21,500 light-years from us. At five times the mass of Earth, you'd think this is the extreme gravity world, right? Well, no. The surface gravity here is actually pretty manageable thanks to its larger size spreading out the mass. You step out onto the cracked alien ice plains and glance up at the sky, where a weak red star barely flickers above you. The horizon stretches in every direction as a sea of shattered ice. And what is that? Your visor fogs over almost instantly. They often call this planet a real-life Hoth from Star Wars, but let me tell you, Hoth is practically a tropical paradise compared to the frozen Ogle world. Here, the temperature bottoms out at around minus 220 degrees Celsius. That's colder than liquid nitrogen. And while our own Pluto can get even colder, it doesn't have an atmosphere to steal heat from you, like this Hoth tryhard does. So, if you absolutely have to live out your own Empire Strikes Back fantasy, bring a nuclear-powered parka on top of your spacesuit, skiing goggles to keep your visor from frosting, and at least three tauntauns, yes, the kind you can slice open and sleep inside. You're welcome. Some exoplanets practically beg you to hum the Star Wars theme, and Kepler-16b is one of them. Located about 200 light-years from Earth, this gas giant is roughly the size of Saturn, with half the mass of Jupiter, and yet it's famous not for its size. Kepler-16b orbits not one, but two stars. You'll have to walk the dusty surface of one of its rocky moons because you can't take a stroll on a gas giant. Take in the view, towering cliffs, rolling dunes of burnt orange sand, and two blazing suns sinking in perfect tandem behind the horizon. You don't even need to squint to imagine Luke Skywalker standing right there with you, gazing into the distance while John Williams blares in your head. For a moment, it really feels perfect for an ultimate Star Wars sunset experience. But when they do set, it's more like good old Mercury. Temperatures there have the craziest range of over 600 degrees Celsius between daytime and nighttime due to the lack of atmosphere to smoothen the transition. And so is the case with your Tatooine wannabe, still set on living your fantasy. Fine, 
But pack a sturdy pair of space boots that won't melt or freeze, a reliable droid companion to fix all the equipment that's going to be broken by the temperature shock, and binoculars to look out for Jawas. You never know when they'll show up to strip your ship for parts. Some planets just scream extreme sports, and this one might actually be trying to kill you stylishly. This rocky super-Earth Cancri 55E is located just 41 light-years away and is about twice the size of Earth, with eight times the mass. So, okay, maybe you expected another boring gravity crush scenario. But no, gravity's not the problem here. The problem is that this place is basically hell. From the moment you land, your visor fills with the glow of rivers of lava snaking across the surface like molten neon. Above you, black skies shimmer faintly as iron snow rains down from the searing winds. This is so heavy metal. See, 55 Cancri A is so close to its star that its surface temperature averages over 2,300 degrees Celsius, hot enough to vaporize iron. At least half the planet is a molten ocean of lava, constantly churning, cracking, and boiling as if the entire crust is trying to shrug you off. Think Mustafar from Star Wars, except Anakin and Obi-Wan would both turn into crispy nuggets in an instant. But if you happen to have proper sci-fi heat protection, lava surfing is definitely worth trying you'd be orders of magnitude trendier than anyone back home. Just try to not slip down from the board, ever. So, except the heat-shielded hoverboard from Silver Surfer himself, make sure to pack plenty of aloe vera ointment for when you inevitably find out just how much it burns. And, oh yeah, a freshly signed will and testament, just to be safe while being extremely unsafe. Seal. Some really extreme planets can't make up their mind about cold or hot, like Gliese 436b. Sitting just 30 light years from Earth, this little oddball is about the size of Neptune, with over 20 times Earth's mass, and it's got one heck of a gimmick ice. But not the kind you're used to. Step onto the shimmering surface, and at first, it's surreal. Ice stretching out in all directions, glinting under the dim, orangey light of its parent star. Except your suit sensors start screaming that the ground is over 400 degrees Celsius, like you're on Venus, hot enough to melt lead. And yet, the ice stays perfectly solid. This isn't some spa trick. Gliese 436b's gravity is so intense, it squeezes water molecules into a bizarre crystalline structure known as hot ice, technically called Ice 7, that can stay solid even at searing temperatures due to extreme pressures. That's so cool, pun intended, and you just have to tell your friends you stood on fire ice, but it's gonna burn your feet off in an instant, ignoring the spacesuit. But even before that, you'd probably get crushed by the immense pressure, which is many times higher than the one that destroyed the Ocean Gate sub. My advice, don't descend there at all. Pack a couple of pressure and thermal resistant probes, just like the ones we sent to Venus, and also a VR headset connected to their cameras. Maybe one of them won't break instantly and give you a glimpse into the hot ice world. It's not as cool as standing there, but hey, a remote VR option exists precisely for things like this. Besides, I'll compensate you for the lack of immersion with this exclusive treat, a cotton candy planet that shouldn't exist. Toy 6894b was recently discovered near a red dwarf star about 240 light years from Earth. At first glance, it looks like your standard gas giant. But here's the weird part. While it's huge, almost like Jupiter, yet at the same time, at least eight times lighter than our top gas giant, which in turn means that 
TOI6894B is less dense than a cotton candy, basically a giant ball of hot gas somehow holding itself together. It's more puff than planet, and it doesn't make sense. But if you're there, it feels like floating in a dreamscape. Around you, there's nothing but a haze of pinkish clouds stretching endlessly in all directions. The horizon glows softly like a fading sunset. At first, it feels peaceful, but then it dawns on you. There's no real bottom here. Toy 6894B is so low density it barely even holds itself together. And if your tether snaps, you'll just keep sinking forever. This planet is extremely soothing, beautiful, and absolutely terrifying once you remember physics still applies. So, if you're planning to take this one-way trip into Fluffland, here's what you'd want. A personal hover bike with emergency boosters, enough backup oxygen to last longer than your nerves, and a very sturdy graphene tether just to be safe without it you'll become just another ghost drifting through the endless clouds. But hey, maybe you like your exoplanets slick and dense. Boy, do I have a shiny destination for you. This tongue twister sits about 4,000 light years away and is unlike anything else in the galaxy. It orbits a millisecond pulsar, essentially a dead neutron star that rotates really fast and spews radio waves in our direction. But this isn't even the weird part. The surface of this planet sparkles like a jewelry store exploded. Mountains of jagged crystal catch the faint, deadly light of its host pulsar, throwing shards of brilliance in every direction. But why? This planet is four times wider than Earth, but at the same time, hundreds of times heavier, almost like Jupiter. The gravity here is so crushing that in time, carbon crystallized into a solid diamond. Some scientists even believe that it used to be a star, a white dwarf, but then the pulsar stripped away almost all of its mass. So in the end, we have a diamond exoplanet. If you have some kind of anti-grav device to visit it in the first place, it feels surreal, decadent even. But before you carve yourself a souvenir, mind that faint light flashing in the sky. Your reminds you where you really are, orbiting a pulsar that spins hundreds of times per second, blasting out intense beams of radiation powerful enough to fry your suit and scramble your DNA like an egg. So if you absolutely must flex on everyone you've ever met, bring a Geiger counter so you at least know how fast you're dying. A diamond drill if you're planning on chipping off a piece of the floor and of course, a tuxedo lined with lead. If you're going to go out, you might as well do it in style. Some planets are beautiful the way a knife is beautiful, and HD 149026b, just over 250 light years from Earth, is the most prominent. So much so, it has a proper name for once, Smertrios. It's an ancient Gallic god of storm, like Thor or Zeus, just from the different neighborhood. And why, you may ask, the astronomers wanted to highlight this particular feature of the exoplanet. Well, Smertrios's parent F-type star is heavier and hotter than the Sun. And the planet orbits really, really close to it, like 20 times closer than Mercury to the Sun. But here we have a gas giant, roughly the size of Saturn, but yet denser, thanks to a massive rocky core and a thick atmosphere that doesn't just crush, it dazzles. The first thing you notice when you descend into its upper layers is the color. The whole sky shimmers in bright yellow and orange, streaked with flashes of electric light. Then you feel it. Tiny impacts on your helmet. A soft hiss as the visor starts to fog with scratches. That's because it's raining. 
raining glass. On Smurtrios, the intense heat and pressure in the atmosphere cause silicate vapor to condense into molten glass droplets slicing through the haze. And as if that weren't enough, the chemical cocktail of the air also produces sapphire dust that drifts lazily down with the glass, turning the whole place into some deranged luxury snow globe. Except the atmosphere is over one and a half thousand degrees Celsius hot, a little shy from being able to melt bronze and silver. The winds here rage at thousands of kilometers per hour, whipping those molten glass shards sideways, turning the whole thing into a hellish blender, just waiting to carve you up. Now, that's what I call a storm worthy of a god's name. To even try to endure Smurtrios in all its glory, pack a shatterproof helmet you can actually see through after being sandblasted by glass, and also a whole armor set, preferably indestructible. Oh, and a BFG just in case you meet some demons in this hellhole. Some planets just don't respect personal space, and the Kepler-36 system is the galaxy's most awkward roommate situation. About 1,200 light-years from Earth, these two worlds, Kepler-36b and Kepler-36c, share one of the tightest planetary orbits we've ever seen. How tight? You're standing on Kepler-36b when the orbits bring them closest just a few million kilometers apart, and in the sky you see a Neptune-like gas giant looming just above. Wow! But that beauty comes with baggage. Every 97 days, when the two worlds pass each other at this terrifying proximity, the tidal forces are no joke. The tidal forces from Kepler-36c pull and stretch the crust of your planet. You'll feel the quakes rattle through your suit and watch the horizon quiver as if the whole world is trying to shake you off. But where else are you going to stand under an entire planet and feel like it's about to fall on your head? It's equal parts terrifying and beautiful. The ultimate front row seat to a system that probably shouldn't even work. So pack wisely, a stabilizing exoskeleton to keep you from toppling over during the worst of the tremors, a good pair of earplugs so you can actually sleep through the constant quakes, and most importantly, something to calm your nerves when that enormous world drifts silently above you like a cosmic guillotine. Some vacations end with a bang, but let's end ours with something soothing, and extremely so. About 750 light-years from Earth, Tres 2b is a gas giant about the size of Jupiter. But while Jupiter is a swirling canvas of colorful storms, Tres 2b is nothing. It reflects less than 1% of the light that hits it, meaning it's blacker than fresh asphalt at midnight and a black hole's event horizon. You float down into its upper atmosphere, and for a moment you wonder if your helmet's gone dark. Below you, there's just an endless abyss of dark gas. Above you, faint glimmers from its star struggle to illuminate anything at all and fail. This is the darkest known planet in the galaxy, and we have no idea why. Isn't it the scariest part? And yet, there's something almost peaceful about it. After all those extreme worlds, the flares, the storms, the hot ice and glass rain, here the void just swallows you whole. It's the closest black hole experience without a black hole. Sometimes the scariest thing isn't the violence of the cosmos, it's the quiet. So if you're making this your last stop, bring industrial floodlights. If you really think you need to see what's out there in a sturdy phone with therapist on speed dial for when the blackness starts to feel too personal. So, of all of these worlds, where would you definitely go and which would you avoid at all costs? Share your extreme preferences in the comments.